Howdy y'all, it is Spooferjack again with another video production from Vadim M. Today's video is going to be on the topic of Grand Theft Auto V's beta missions. Today we are going to investigate the missions and see what they were originally meant to be, how they were changed, and what was actually cut from them during the development of the game. Let's start our journey with the first mission in Grand Theft Auto V, Prologue. According to the unused in-game text, during the bank robbery the player had two additional objectives, going into the security room and shooting the monitors. Interesting thing is, there is actually a hidden surveillance room here where the player can't normally get into, unless you use the evil black magic known as cheats. In this forbidden surveillance room, you can destroy everything, starting from these monitors and onward to these redwood boxes. Sadly, it is unknown if these monitors in the security room were connected with one another, because there are more things to discuss. According to this unused voice line from Brad, Hey! Hey, we gotta torch the servers! Come on! There was another cut objective for us, which was to torch some kind of servers, and unfortunately their location is unknown. By the way, it is also possible to destroy these surveillance cameras as well. However, it is unnecessary to do so, because the game doesn't tell you to do it. Looks like in the early days of development, the developers had an idea for us to destroy every single evidence of our crime, but later the whole idea was cut. Also, according to other unused strings, the prologue mission had more secondary tasks, like follow Trevor, press, is there a button here, to exit the phone menu and put away the phone, switch to Michael to drive, grab the woman, and so on. All these actions in the final version of the game were replaced with cutscenes. What I can't really understand is the fact that you could fail this mission by letting the hostage escape. Now you can't really do it because the game won't go any further if all the hostages are locked in that room. All this might mean that it was intended to be a much more complicated mission in the game's early stages. But wait, there's something more to discuss. By scanning the second trailer, we can spot some distinct differences in our crew's apparel. It appears that during the prologue, Michael was supposed to wear completely different apparel. Just look at his boots and jacket. In my personal opinion, these clothes look very close to Michael's appearance in the famous Bury the Hatchet mission, but it's very hard to tell since the trailer is kinda blurry. Moreover, Brad didn't wear goggles and his ski mask seems to have only one color. Instead of a ski mask with goggles, Trevor wore a balaclava just like Michael. By the way, did you notice that Michael is still wearing his balaclava in this scene? Could it possibly mean that the sequence with Jaspers was added much later? Who knows? Speaking of outfits, according to the game files, the security guard you punch in the beginning was meant to have a bobcat cap, as he has a fully functional slot for it. Jasper, whom you killed with a headshot, was meant to wear these reading glasses. Finally, Brad was able to wear a nushanka, but it collides with his hair unless wearing a ski mask. Just imagine a balaclava with a nunchaka. Eh, that seems like a pretty rad robber's disguise. That was all for the first mission, let's continue onwards. Remember when Jimmy bought a yellow BJXL from Simeon and Franklin had to repossess it afterwards? It turns out, there is an unused animation with an unused objective found for this particular mission, suggesting that Franklin was able to climb up the vines in order to get into Michael's house. What you are seeing right now is the unused animation found for the specific objective with Franklin slowly but surely climbing up the vines. At the end he breaks in the same window as it is in the final version of the game, just using a different approach for his goal. Special thanks for this find goes to Hey Slick, that's me from the GTA forums. In the final game, in order to do your dirty deeds, we use Michael's vehicle. We climb onto his truck, and then onto the roof, and whoosh, we're in the house. Sadly, it is unknown why this feature with the vines was cut. Were there two ways for Franklin to get inside Michael's house? One by using the truck, and one by using the vines? Were these vines replaced with the truck? Who knows? But anyways, let's keep our eyes peeled for the next mission. According to the first trailer, by choosing the loud approach for the jewel store job heist, our crew would use Bugstar's equipment, creating an ambush with the assault rifles. The whole idea with this stolen Bugstar's equipment in the final version of the game was changed to the smart approach. The loud approach received a few tweaks. 
The crew now uses carbine rifles, drives a black burrito, and wears motorcycle helmets with suits as a disguise. By the way, if we look closer at the social club image, we can see that originally Michael wore his everyday suit with the team, wearing balaclavas during the loud approach. Interesting thing is, in Michael's character trailer, it is shown that he received his new tuxedo, but still wears a balaclava instead of a bike helmet. You see, Rockstar Games always polishes these small cosmetic details until the end. And by saying until the end, I mean by thinking over and over again about them. Just look at this brief scene from the trailer along with the social club image. Looks like the developers considered reusing the carbine rifle in the smart approach as well, but later, for some reason, decided to stick with the assault rifle like in the early concept shown in this first trailer. Also according to the original concept, Michael was supposed to wear a respirator mask. After some time, he received this gas mask, and this gas mask received two yellow cartridges. Not to mention that there is an unused Bugstars cap available for Michael to wear. Some people think that he could wear it with that scrapped respirator mask. I guess it is kind of an art for Rockstar to create a unique look for every single mission. By the way, according to this pre-release screenshot, during the getaway you could actually spot some police buffaloes and cruisers, while in the final version of the game, the police constantly use the interceptors. That's all we can really say about this heist mission. Without any doubt, a lot of you remember that glorious day when the first trailer hit the internet. It was that thing. That magic. I'm guessing everyone remembers this scene with the crop duster. Basically what we saw there might be a cut mission, where we had to take the crop duster, load it with whatever chemicals we were offered, and spray them over the vineyard for whatever reason. Despite the fact that the trailer shows us a duster spraying pesticides, it is currently an exclusive Grand Theft Auto Online feature. If I remember correctly, it was added there with an unknown past gen update quite some time ago. By the way, in the trailer we can clearly see that the chemicals fly from the sprayers of the wing, while in the multiplayer they come from the tail. Sadly, the true story behind the scene will probably remain a mystery forever. I think it's time to tell you yet another interesting fact about our beloved missions.xml file. Both the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 have two different mission.xml files. If we were to compare them, it would turn out that the PlayStation 3 file is much older than the Xbox 360 one, and there will be some examples I will mention later. The next mission on our list is the Friends Reunited mission, where we had to drive to Los Santos with the idea of finding the mysterious Michael Townley, who was considered dead by Trevor. Here is the deal. According to the leaked PlayStation 3 file, it is said that Trevor actually took Nervous Ron to his trip to Los Santos. However, in the leaked Xbox 360 file, instead of Nervous Ron, it lists Wade as it is in the final version of the game. How this would affect the game afterwards is a complete mystery. Ron, you little bastard! Get out here! We're going to Los Santos! Are we? Not you, me and Wade! What about me? Here is another example. According to the PS3 file, it is said that the friend request mission was actually split up into two separate missions, A and B. The A mission was going to be called friend request, basically as in the final game, while mission B would have the selling short name. The first mission would involve Michael entering the Life Invader office and setting a bomb in a mobile phone, and that's it. Here is an interesting tidbit, instead of Life Invader offices, it says Life Blurb offices, meaning it was a beta name. Just a cool fact. Sadly, it is unknown how the second mission would be triggered. Maybe you had to wait until the start of the press conference, or lurk around town as much as you want until you decide to enter the marker, which would show you the famous scene killing Jay Norris live. Oh. Ah. By the way, Michael's character trailer shows him wearing his everyday clothing while watching the press conference. In the final version of the game, he still wears that Life Invader disguise clothing since the game just skips right away to the action. This fact of the trailer might prove the idea that you had to wait for the press conference. Oh, and by the way, Tracy in this scene wore gray trousers. Nothing really interesting, but a good thing to mention anyways. Remember the mission Trevor Phillips Industries where we had to defend our meth lab from the Aztecas gang? Based on the leaked file, in addition to the grenade launcher, Chef would give us some C4s so you could have some more fun playing around with explosives. I really am gonna put you out of business! 
Let's take a brief look at the Nervous Ron mission. In Trevor's character trailer, the scene where Trevor is shooting on the airplane wing took place during stormy weather and there were many explosions occurring all around the plane. However, in the final version, during this mission the weather is clear and Trevor bails out from a plane without any fireworks in the background. According to this pre-release screenshot, the whole event during the Franklin and Lamar mission took place during the night. But hold on, there is something more to discuss. If you slow down the second trailer, you could actually see that 9F had an SA exempt license plate. If you don't know, the SA exempt plate is based on the real life CA exempt, meaning that this specific car is owned or leased by the US government, state agencies, and so on. As a result, the car or cars you stole during the mission weren't just civilian cars, which would beg the question, how could Franklin repossess a government car for Simeone? What is more interesting is that in the previous screenshot, both of these cars had civilian license plates as in the final game. As for the last note, the dude who saw his car stolen received a different shirt. That concludes this first video on the Grand Theft Auto V beta missions. This is the first part in this series and there will be more in the future. If you would like to see the rest of this series, make sure to click the subscribe button below to keep yourself updated. There are other videos coming from Vadim in the future as well like this, that you can see after subscribing. Anyways, this has been Spooferjog, voicing more Vadim and material, signing out, thanks for watching.